Yes, thank you, Lamin. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here once again, and I thank your team. Uh, yes, uh, as you already know, on the July 1st, we embarked on a sit-down strike uh, that was very genuine for the Gambians. So uh, we all gathered, uh, I forgot the date, and the student union leader went and then gathered all stakeholders, mm -hmm. including the head of civil service. There, He was there representing the office of the president as the chancellor and the student leader was there and then National Assembly Select Committee on Education uh, it was represented by Honorable Cedia Jata and then we have the Permanent Secretary of uh, Minister of Higher Education and myself. Yes. So we were there from the afternoon to 9 p.m. to discuss about each agenda point. So we finally, um, we discussed a lot of things and then including the most important point constituting the governing council because the governing council that was there was an interim one which was there for a period of four years and we all know interim gov in, mm -hmm. an interim cannot go beyond four yes. years yes. Uh, six months sometimes one year sorry yes. so we demanded for it to be dissolved because it's very important it's about the governance of the university we have learned our lesson for the past five years because of the governing council so we agreed in principle that it's going to be dissolved and then uh, we all signed the resolutions all those parties have mentioned mm -hmm. which means now it's legally binding mm -hmm. so the 26th of july was given to them uh, that okay we'll dissolve and come up with a new governing council since then we have not been written to and i have uh, called honorable cd ajata he was also he said all the same thing that he was not written to but by right at least for transparency purpose for inclusiveness, at least we should be written to. So what are you going to do now? So I had rumors, since we are not written to, that they are working on it. Probably next week they will release, um, 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 there will be a press release that the UTG has a new governing council. So we are waiting, on, even though the deadline has passed. But now the staff said, despite the fact that, you know, uh, all these things, uh, 26 was violated, we can still be present until the beginning of the next semester if nothing happened or any of the demands, because most of the demands are on uh, the governing council. They are depending on the constitution of so the governing council. So do you feel cheated by the government there? They came and then there was a deadline for this to happen, the dissolution of the governing council, and this never happened. Do you feel cheated in any way? No, I feel disappointed, not cheated. Yeah, this, we feel disappointed with the staff because we were expecting at least a communication that at, the, at these two days before the deadline, okay, we have gone far to this level. Mm -hmm. But the governing council still now, we did not hear anything from the office of the president. And the staff said if nothing is done before the 15th of September, before the beginning of the next semester, there will be no, there'll be no semester, because there will be no lectures rather. The semester will not begin. So you're going to refuse to work? Of course, because these are legally binding documents, because we all signed. That means it's legally binding. We don't want chaos. It's election time. We want. That's why we don't even make noise. 26th of July has passed. But we compromise. We are still listening. And then I hope they are working on it according to Why rules. are you so much against this governing uh, interim governing council? You've been leading this rebellion in the positive sense of the word, though, since, I mean, I mean for, for a long time now. Why are you so much against this interim governing council of the UTG? Yeah, I was expecting you say you have been leading this positive change instead of rebellion. Well, in well rebellion in the, in the positive <laughs> no, sense say of the word. you have been a positive change yes. is better. Positive <laughs> change, I mean, that is uh, subjective. You, you <laughs> will have some people on the other side who would say, this is not positive change. These people are just wasting people's time. They are troublemakers. I can tell you the students, the whole student, they realize that this staff, they are doing this for our purpose. Look at the areas we have recovered from Moas. You know, $189 million since we came to power, since 2019. Recently, Parliament have approved 134 and Mohas have paid $25 million, altogether $159. So, Alhamdulillah, that all these things have been done. So, this is going to be, we have already spoken with the student leader to engage the sub-associations of different schools. They go and assess the campus and then try to see what the university needs. And then the university has no choice other than to buy those materials because I've already engaged the management particularly the vice chancellor. So this is a positive change. The governing council that was there was interim. When you bring somebody, it was not appointed based on the act. Because normally the chairman of governing council should be appointed by the president through the recommendation of the ministry. But this one was not done that, like that. It's the minister who appointed him. Now, now and the, the members in the governing council, unfortunately, some of them, 
you know, they don't know what was going on in the university. They depend on the management. That's why we said we wanted a proactive and dynamic governing council that is going to engage the university instead of depending on the university. Now, the one person whose name has featured all throughout is the registrar. You came here, you were on my show, you accused him of holding uh, different positions in the UTG. He came here, he also tried to dismiss some of the claims that you made. Now we have seen you have renewed your, your war with him by writing to the vice chancellor saying his term of office has expired, he needs to go, only for him to, through his lawyers, to write and threaten that he is going to take you to court. Yes, uh, he gave me three days and I waited until after three days to show him that you cannot do anything because, uh, of course, I have written to the vice chancellor because in my letter, I mentioned that since there is no substantive governing council at this moment, mm -hmm. you are the chief executive officer of the university. So we are writing to you to engage the registrar because the condition of service, section 8.5, stated that uh, you know, the position of the, of the registrar and the director of finance, they should be there for a fixed period of time, renewable once. You know once? Mm -hmm. So now he has served his two terms, three years, three years. Mm -hmm. So there is no way out the registrar can extend his term. Mm -hmm. They wanted to uh, um, um, review the condi condition of service. We tell them the condition of service cannot be reviewed until and unless the UTG Act bill is enacted. Because right now we don't have a UTG Act. The 1999 is there, but the Tertiary and Higher Education Act has repealed that one. So we have even written today to the, to the Select Committee on Education so that now they can bring all stakeholders to review that bill and enact it because it's still there. You know? So unfortunately, um, this, his term has ended as a registrar. I don't want to be personal here, but just to, you asked me this question. Mm -hmm. So he has written to me and then to a private firm. They have written to me already and then uh, telling me within three days, if you don't withdraw your statement and apologize, you know, you have no right to do this. I have the moral and legal right, of course, as a staff leader, to know what is happening at the university. If things go wrong, then I bring, I bring this to the attention of the leaders. But, but they are saying your claims are malicious and these are defamatory in nature. And if you don't apologize, so you are saying you are not going to apologize. I said they gave me three days and I waited for five days and I submitted my letter. So let's see what is going to happen. And in turn, I have replied to that letter, engaging my lawyers and then in fact, that was a good news. When I saw the letter, I said, this is the end of this um, old saga. Because you cannot threaten somebody. You know, it's against the Uganda Declaration of, on Academic Freedom and Social Responsibility, which Gambia is a signatory for you threaten an African intellectual for expressing his or her right. So in this case, he has written, and I have replied, and I gave them eight days mm -hmm. from yesterday. You can start counting from now. Mm -hmm. If the university did not take um, any action, the university will be now the matter will be taken to the supreme court to enforce so the you are going to court. the implementation of the government of the of the condition of service there's no option other than that because your time has expired go to another portfolio we are not telling you to leave the university move to another administrative or academic portfolio you cannot be there until the rest of your life the condition of service did not allow you to do that so you have to be there on a specific on a fixed period renewable ones and that is three years and I said, so if I write to the registrar, for example, and then he writes back threatening me, mm -hmm. trying to divert my attention to a private firm, I'm talking about the condition of service, the time limit. Talk about that. But right now, because as a threat, and then he refused to do but that. But he, he feels violated. That is why he uh, engaged the services of his, his, his No, his the lawyer. condition of service, that is meant to distract me or to silence me. We are not individuals to be silenced. Since 2019, we have been working for change, and you can see. We have almost uh, successfully. So, in all of these things that you you are you are you are fronting, you have your entire staff behind you. Yes, we have entire staff. Even those staff who voted no to the strike, four staff now they are with us. And the student, more importantly, even the students, they are with the staff. We are not talking about salary increment. We are talking about structural change and governance. So, all our struggle, we all have the right to you know the opportunity to stay outside. But we came here. This is our country. We want to struggle and work for the betterment of UTG. But now, as I told you, we have given them eight days now to act on this, to the vice chancellor to engage him through the HR, and then to declare his position vacant, the registrar, so that it can be advertised according to the condition of service. Because you cannot stay, he has even stayed there for more than one additional year on top of that expiration date. You are done, 
as a registrar move to another some universities registrar will be there just for one one time now how how, yeah. how have the issue of the vice chancellor gone because i mean <laughs> i mean he was here the registrar and he's saying that you don't have people gambians who are qualified for this job when you look at the qualification do you know how many gambians are outside even in the united states alone how many professors are there they are more the than full the, professors full professors gambians gambians yes in top universities in the world gambian professors but unfortunately, UTG professors is another question. You know, they, you put a question mark in front of their qualification. Some of them, not all. So, because sometimes it's very sad. You see a professor, you go to online, they like Google Scholar, you search, you don't see his publication. So, is, this is very sad. I'm not trying to attack any individual here. Yes. But I can tell you the position of the Vice Chancellor ends in 15th of September. He told me that he's supposed to go. All right. As I told you initially, that the position of the Vice Chancellor, I'm quoting the condition of service, is supposed to be advertised 12 months before the expiration of the incumbent. It was ignored strategically just to impose somebody to act. They waited until six weeks. They came and then they advertised. Can you select a Vice Chancellor within six weeks? It cannot. So the staff said, no, this cannot happen. We have to follow the book, which is a legal, a legal, a legal um, document for the University of the Gambia. So that was not done. Now our position is, we want from the incumbent to the incumbent. That's why the condition of service provided that long period of time. So now our ground, our, our stand is as staff, collectively. We cannot allow an acting vice chancellor. And that's our position. If the VC leaves in 15 of August, uh, 15 of September, we are going to be a university without a vice chancellor. Take my words and the staff are united on this. You are united on this. Of course. But also so, the one thing that you seem to be united on has to do with a Gambian been given this role and not a foreigner no we did not unite on that i told you the last time when i yes. came here that personally me if you bring a gambian vice chancellor and a non-gambian vice chancellor and they are all equal in everything qualification experience exposure i prefer the gambian vice chancellor because he cannot be manipulated if you bring a foreign vice chancellor he can be dictated and then he can be distracted and he can be marginalized we have seen that for the past five years the vice chancellor is a very senior man, and the act says that the vice chancellor should be meeting the chancellor, who is the president of the country, yes. on a regular basis. But when I asked him, he said he has never met the, the, the president, the current president, President Barrow, now, the, to the, brief him. So, on, unfortunately, during the graduation, we we'll meeting him on talk about graduation, but to brief him about the ongoing of the university, it seems like he's been banned, you know, indirectly or directly. So this is not done. That's why if you have a, a dynamic governor, um, Gambian vice chancellor, this mm -hmm. thing will not happen. Yes. If you are the vice chancellor of the Gambia or UTG, would you expect to be? Uh, you, would you accept as the most senior person after the president to be manipulated by somebody? Your genial? No. You will not want that. Yeah. So, 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 so your land ministry is also banning, uh, I mean, officials, uh, management officials from traveling. What is your opinion on that? Yes, uh, of course, we have. It has been brought to my attention. So we wrote back to the ministry that to, to you know because they're supposed to travel to Turkey with other universities they have to converge in Turkey uh, in Istanbul with Oxford universities and other universities in the, in the UK and Comstec also in Pakistan to discuss and and uh, come up with a, um, an initiative to of this food and nutrition nutrition and food technology center at the yes. University of the Gambia yes so that is an opportunity for the country so now he told them uh, that he banned them before they travel. I don't know whether an insider informed the ministry that these people are about to go. Because whenever they want to travel, they need clearance from the ministry. I, um, for me, I don't know. I have no idea why they are doing that. And they banned them from traveling without justification. I swear to you, if you do this in Senegal, for example, Sheikh Hunter Job University, you are done. You cannot do that. You know, for me personally, you can, you know, universities should not travel excessively. Like what they did before the strike, traveling to Nigeria just for party and purpose. And then they came two days, they traveled to Senegal for party and purpose. That is not done. And they travel, including the director of finance. What are they going to do there? Just to sign on MOU. But this is a genuine cause. That's why I step in mm -hmm. for the interest of the nation. This goes to show that we are not enemies to the management. We appeal to the ministry to do something about this issue. And also, one thing, the last time I invited you, you told me, uh, the UTG is like primary school. That was debunked. The, the mm. registrar came here, Dr. Taro came here and said, look, the university, their students are good and Gambians who are products of the university are doing very, uh, very well in all departments that they are working in. And you are the head of the faculty and staff association. And you are saying that this is a university that is just like primary school. <laughs>
That is what you told me <laughs> on record. Uh, I mean, yes, you are right. I'm not saying currently it's like a primary school. But what I mean is... You UT didn't qualify I'm, the last I'm, time. I'm coming. Yes. UTG has graduated a lot of people, including yourself. You are doing well yes. in that Fatu network. So it has graduated a lot of people who has uh, studied, who have studied rather, from uh, in, in, in high universities, like top universities in the world, in different countries. University of the Gambia did that. You know, no, no, no. It has tried. You know, people have, you know, since the onset, 1999 up to today. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. What I mean by primary school, the structures are not there. UTG is not functioning. The problem of UTG is the management. When you say it's like a primary school, in reality, of course, yes. you know that it's not like a primary school. For example, they, when they travel, they did not inform anybody, and we don't know who was acting. You go to the office, you don't find anybody there. Primary school, do they behave like that? That's why I said it, it was like a primary school because of that action. But I asked you about quality the last time. Quality. You are speaking in the context of quality. This country, this, this student, uh, these particular students, yes. university have graduated. They did their effort. A university without a standard library up to today, a university without book mat uh, mat uh, yes. resource resources and other yes. things, yes. university without campus, we are still struggling. We go and find buy our own books. We go to online and search articles and read, and then you graduated. You happen to see yourself in one of the best universities. You did it for yourself. It's not the university because the environment and the infrastructure is not there. So meaning, mm -hmm. great people have graduated from this university, mm -hmm. not like the university graduated these great people. Because the great people made themselves great by doing extra effort, making extra effort to buy books on their own, at their own expenses, and to make further research. You know, and that because you, you agree with me, the university, uh, no university will, will, will graduate good students without a library. We don't have a standard library right now. We have an online library recently launched, but we don't have a campus and we don't have a standard library. If you go to Senegal, their libraries are huge. They have everything for students. So now when you graduate and you see yourself in top universities, it's because as a result of your effort. So that is very important. That's what I said. Like the action they did, is primary school is even better. When the principal travels, people know that, okay, the principal is not here, but yes. as a university, you travel, people don't know what is happening. You go to the office for signature, you don't find them there. Yes. And you call it as the, the highest institution of learning. And I've mentioned, it's the only catalyst for development of the Gambia. People have to take this university seriously. Yes. And then, and then try to reform the university for national development. Dr. Uh, uh, Jiba, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, I want us to get into some other time. We'll get into your, 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 I mean, we will still follow this up. Because I think this is very important in terms of the resolutions, in terms of the demands. You will have to bear with us, okay? Yeah, but yes. uh, just finally, um, yes. as I told you, mm -hmm. for the viewers and then to inform the policymakers, mm -hmm. I thank everybody who participated towards mm -hmm. the suspension of the strike. Mm -hmm. In academia, we suspend strike. We don't end strike. Mm -hmm. So we the strike is not our mandate. It's not our objective, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we love this country. We want this country to be peaceful. But we are appealing to the Chancellor, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, mm -hmm. to further engage the stakeholders before the semester begins. Because if anything is pending, especially the governing council and because all our demands are all linked with the yes. governing council we yes. are all embarking on a sit down strike again you are going the next on. semester will not begin and that is not good for the story it's not good for the country look at the, the political situation of the country mm -hmm. election is coming in december we don't want violence that's why we are peasants still now the governing council is violent we should have just get up and say this so please in a nutshell you the journalists try to engage the university see the university as the main factor for development Thank so, you. but you people normally you accommodate politicians more than the academics. <laughs> yes. so, and I think it's important <laughs> that we, that is why I even exactly. brought you today. Thank because you so much. So, most of the time it's about politics, politics, politics. But rest of all, we are going to follow this up. No okay? problem. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much uh, Dr. Dr., Dr., uh, Dr. Jiva uh, there. We'll take Thank a short you. break and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Thank you.
Global presents the new Tulip Gardens. Taft Tulip Gardens is set to comprise service plots in sizes ranging from 220 to 570 meters square. Deposit as low as $83,600 only. An 18 month interest free payment plan with only 20% deposit on the service plots. Please contact 376 233 or 776 233. Free, free.